This is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association, located at 1601 East 18th Street, Suite 200L. What's up, Kansas City? I'm Serenity, and we're down at the W.E.D. Du Bois Learning Center. What's your name, sir? This is uh, George Walker. I'm the president of the Black Family Technology Awareness Association. Okay, tell us a little bit about your position and what you do. Well, what I, um, I've been the president since we founded this organization in 2004. And our program is about eliminating the digital divide that exists between African Americans and, and the internet and technology, not just the internet, but really in technology and STEM fields. So we try to get more young people into uh, looking at STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We also work with the family. We work with senior citizens. We do basic computer classes. And we just try to make people aware of how they can improve their standard of living by using technology. Okay. Like, what's some, some of the name of the classes that you guys usually have? The classes we have now, we have uh, Lego Robotics. We also have a VEX Robotics program that we're doing. We've got a basic computer class. And we're starting a coding class. We also do some events. One of our main events is the Black Family Technology Awareness Week which happens in February, it'll be February the 7th through the 13th of uh, this year, or of 2016. So the Black Family Technology Awareness Week will let youth showcase their technology uh, projects and things like that in a competition. We do the Black Technology Awards, so we actually give uh, STEM leaders, African American STEM leaders in the city awards for uh, education, for business, whatever fields they're in, we get nominations from the public and those people are then presented with awards at our awards banquet which will be happening on Thursday of the Black Family Technology Awareness Week. Okay, whose idea was to come up with this Awareness Week? Like, is that just something you guys would think about doing and just was no. Go ahead and do that, or? Uh, I'd have to say that the, the genesis of that comes from a guy named Tyrone Taborn out of Baltimore, Maryland. He's the editor and the publisher of the Black Engineers and, Techno and Information Technology magazine. Okay. He does a Black Engineer of the Year uh, a program every year. And he started this Black Family Technology Awareness Week, and it was a nationwide program. To do it, so we did it. We started it in Kansas City in 2004 as part of Sprint employees, AT&T employees, and different engineer people from Burns and McDonald and Black and Veatch, uh, and the Black Data Processing Associates started this in 2004 here. But we wanted to do something more than just have a week of events, and that's how the Black Family Technology Awareness Association got started. So you guys are launching a radio show, that's correct? Yes. Uh, our latest project now is the KUAW radio station. We have a construction permit to build a low-power FM radio station in Kansas City from the FCC. And we're also going to be streaming it live on the Internet. So starting uh, tomorrow, we're going to have the community <laughs> opening of this. So we're, we're inviting the community to come out and uh, tell them what this is about and how we're going to use it to improve the same thing, the digital divide. We're going to have educational programming. It's not set up to be a, a new top 40 radio station or, or all of that. What we're about is about education, about community news, about getting information to the community uh, and, and educating the community and people. So we're going to have an opening tomorrow evening. The public is invited out, and uh, we're going to start telling them what the programs are that we're going to have. We're going to be working with youth and adults. So anybody can have an idea for a program, and we'll help you develop it. Uh, community organizations, say a neighborhood association, so if they want to do a, a show or a program, then we'll be uh, glad to work with them. We want to have different community groups on at least once a week to say what's going on in their community, what's happening in their organizations and stuff. So uh, very much similar to what What's Up Kansas City does, right. uh, we're going to be doing it on a live basis daily okay. uh, as we build the programming. Now, we'll start with <laughs> very few programs, but then we'll be building them up. We're going to work with the Kansas City, Missouri School District and other school districts around here. So if their students have programs, if there's churches uh, and community, uh, like I said, community organizations, but churches say they have a group of people that want to do a program once a week on spirituality, on whatever it is, then they'll be able to do that. 
So tell us a little bit about your history as far as what you've seen as far as bridging that digital gap in Kansas City. Well, I tell you, the, the digital divide in Kansas City is still there. We've made some inroads, but there's still a lot to be done. And not just on having the internet in your neighborhood and having access to it. That is a big step. I mean, to have, I mean, the Google Fiber right, is here. Say, yeah, Google Time Fiber. Warner is here. AT&T is here. Uh, uh, Comcast. We do have a lot, and they still have to make it affordable for a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. That yes. becomes a thing, is yeah, the affordability yeah, to them. But the next thing comes is our usage of this technology. I mean, having it to your house is one thing, but then knowing how to use it and to use mm -hmm. it productively so that you become more than just a consumer right. is where we want to start moving people to. We want to get young people to start looking at science and technology careers. Uh, what, what careers do you have, even in broadcasting, other than just being in front of a mic, there's a lot of engineers, there's radio engineers and things that are working behind the scenes that right. we're not represented there very strong. Mm -hmm. And those are jobs that sometimes pay up to six figures. Oh, I bet you, you, know? I bet you if they did that, they would, they would, they would get on that. Right, and, and that's what, see, a lot of times we don't know. Right. So then we're not looking at that. We don't go to college trying to get that degree or trying to go into that field because we're maybe not aware to, of it. And a lot of times we have to be made aware early so that we start looking at that in the seventh and eighth grade, ninth grade, and knowing that we have to take these certain courses or how that's going to affect our end career about what we do in school in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're looking at doing that. So the digital divide in Kansas City now is more leaning at digital literacy. Oh, that's so true. We do have a divide. I mean, everybody uh, in, in a lot of neighborhoods still don't have access to the broadband internet, mm -hmm. uh, still don't have computers in their home. Uh, okay. Some people say, well, just having well, that cell that, phone. Some of that, which is, that also has to do with the economic gap, too. Absolutely. And financial gap. In the Absolutely. They, they do go hand in hand because right. sometimes we have to make a decision. Right, it's between paying the life bill and get the computer. Okay? Right. I'm going to pay this life bill before. <laughs> there you go. And the cable right. bill, and you know, cable, that, right. that bill comes in. But sometimes it's our priorities, too. Mm -hmm. We have to hold people accountable for both sides of it. One is that, yeah, you need to make enough money to be able to afford these type of things. Right. Second is if you make the money, you have to find a priority to say this is one of the things that we need to have. This is something we need to have in the house. Because sometimes, you know, for the price of a Michael Kors bag. Oh. You, know, <laughs> you went there. Yeah, yeah, I went there. I'm going to go there. You went there. <laughs> or, you know, uh, or some New Jordans. Oh, yes. Because New Jordans are about it. two. Yeah. I mean, it's at least $200. So, so sometimes more. for the price of some of those items. you can items, buy a small little laptop. There now, you go. Because they're getting cheaper. They're getting yeah, cheaper. You, so you can get in there. So sometimes it's priority. And that's not always the case. And not to say that we don't want to look nice and dress nice. Right. But we have to find a balance. That is true. We have that's to find true. that balance that allows us to go move from just being consumers right. towards being producers. I mean, we've got young kids that are starting to learn coding and how to do computer coding projects and stuff. That's a, a high dollar field. Yes, it is. A lot of, I remember in college I had some friends who were trying to get into it. And it's also a very difficult field. you got to have a certain mind frame. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. This um, stuff is not, yeah, and it's not easy. We're, and it shouldn't be confused to say, well, you, you just want to work in computers and boy, you just go do it and you do no, it. No, no, no. It it's, takes whole, some it's, work. A, it's considered a different language. It's, Le a, it's yes. equivalent to a foreign language. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But if you're exposed to it, I mean, we need to have more hackathons in our community. Oh. You know, where the kids are coming together and stay up all night working on problems. And not just kids, I mean, mm -hmm. young adults, adults. But have that hackathon happen, like at the WB well, Boys' Lunacy. As long as they're not hacking into stuff they're not supposed to, right? Oh, no, no, no. You give them a policy. That's, and that's when where. You said hacker. I'm like, whoa, like that's a. People so, that hack into a website. And, and the hackers are stuff. not negative. And that's, see, that's another thing that we have to work on in changing that thought because when right. we hear a hacker, we thinking of the people that break into banks and stuff. You're right. That's what now, I was. That's what I automatically thought. I'm like, hacker. That's the uh, the people that break into your yes. accounts and, and drain your money and, and mess you, up your or change report cards and things like there that. You don't give them that idea. No, no, that's not <laughs> it. But if you go to Silicon Valley or if you go to some of these other centers or even out to Google, mm -hmm. 
and say we're going to have a hackathon, they're not thinking about breaking in things. The mindset. See, it's how our mind goes. They're thinking, hey, we can create some stuff. We're going to hack this out. And their, their thought of hacking is different. So we have to make sure that we don't give kids that negative connotation because then our kids will say, well, I don't want to be a hacker. I don't want to get in trouble. Right. You know, because yeah. we're all talking about, well, hackers are bad. Well, no, hackers aren't all bad. The, the hackers, and that's, you have to get into the more geeky <laughs> part of the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. The hackers are the ones that are creating programs and codes. Oh, okay. uh, AT&T has hosted hackathons. Hmm, locally they, or? Not locally. Oh, okay. But uh, Google has had a hackathon out at their center. And, and young people have come in and they're given problems, they're given uh, things to solve, and sometimes it's just to come up with ideas. Yeah, you solutions. get three or four people together and they start working on a coding problem, okay. and businesses are starting to use hackathons to get the ideas, and they pay people for the ideas that are developed in hackathons. Oh, or you okay. can start your business from a hackathon. So uh, the uh, Sprint Accelerator uh, down in the Crossroads area and stuff, that's where there's some hacking going on. Mm, okay, this is all new. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what is the good thing about it. And we've got to get more of our young people to look at those things in a positive light. And we have to get our adults and if they to look at it as a positive light so that they don't say, well, no, you don't go to that. They should say, no, we want to have some of those in our community. Right. I know there's still a lot of people who, um, I know, mainly older people who kind of fear doing certain things with the internet or even fooling with the internet. They're like, well, you know, I ain't going to do that because right. this and that. So I'm not going to pay my bill on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. And those are some of the things. I work with adults every Tuesday. We have a class, a basic computer class here in oh. Tuesday morning. What is the address here? So everybody knows. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, we're sitting here. Okay. <laughs> we're at the studio that's located in the W.E.B. Du Bois building, and it's at 4510 East Linwood in the former Milton Moore Elementary School. Okay. And that's 4510 East Linwood, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And you said you guys have classes on Tuesday? On Tuesday morning from 9.30 to 11. Uh, right now, I think everybody in my class is retired. Oh, okay. So that's, it's, that's it's, good. it's that, but they're learning, they're wanting to learn how to use the computer, learn how to use it effectively. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have computers, but there's that fear. Right. I don't want to break it. I don't want to do this. Or so. <laughs> and then we're, this we're scared that. to pay our bills on it because, well, they'll get my information. And, mm -hmm. and, the, and there are some things to be careful of on the internet. I mean, you don't want to go to the library and pay your bills. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to really use McDonald's. You don't want to use a lot of these public, public Wi-Fi right. places to do right. it. It's good to do it at home, mm -hmm. but you don't want to go out in the public and, and use those Wi-Fi places to pay your bills. So how do, you, what do you, how do you approach that when you have some of the people in your classes where they have that fear? Like, what do you tell them? That's what I try to get them around to is to see that it's safe if you use it safely. It's, right. it's like any other, it's like driving a car. You know, if you go to drive a car, you can drive a car responsibly, or you can drive a are car irresponsibly. Yeah, correct, right. <laughs> using the computer, using technology is some of the same thing. So some of the classes that we'll have on our new radio station will be explaining that too. So we're going to have like a technology corner or a computer corner on the radio, oh, okay. and people will be able to pick us up if they go to www.kuaw.org you'll be able to hear our broadcast. You can pick it up on your cell phone, you can pick it up on your tablet, you can pick it up on your computer. So that's one of the ways that we're planning on reaching people, using this digital technology to reach people uh, just as you would on television or anything else. A lot of uh, young people nowadays and older people are picking this stuff up over their smartphones. Right. So we want to have that out there. I looked at some of the analytics that we got back and it's amazing how much information we give up and don't know it. But when you do listen to the radio online, it, I know what type of phone they're using. Oh, you can I, I was out. able to look and say that somebody was on listening and they had a Windows phone, somebody had a Samsung phone, oh. and somebody had an iPhone. Wow. And that's, that's, that's information that's, that's given out as you listen in on things, not just on our site, but on any site. So you just need to be aware of that, that there's, there is information that's being given out while you're using this, but we're, we're going to make it available. We're going to be available online. We'll be available on air. We're going to be starting a capital fundraiser Tuesday 
in order to raise the money that will erect our antenna and then we'll be broadcasting over the air also. Okay. What if somebody wants to email you directly, if they want to have any questions for you directly, what's your email address? Well, to get in touch with us, you can uh, email us at bfta at sbcglobal.net. So that's bftaa at sbcglobal.net. And you can also call us <laughs> at 816-781-4050. That's the Black Family Technology Awareness Association. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. You're welcome. I'm Serenity reminding you to spit your peace. Pick out what's up, Kansas City .net. I'm Aya BB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out. <laughs>